But now I think, Frank, it's time that we hear from the community on how Static Web Apps experience has been for them, right? Yes. So I think the best person who can do this right now is we welcome Jan De Dublo, the creator of Oh My Posh, who also came up with a very big announcement today, but I'm going to leave that for later. But yeah, <laughs> to uh, tell us about his journey on how Static Web Apps made Oh My Posh what it is and how the CLI experience has become just so amazing. Wonderful. Let's watch that. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Azure Static Web Apps anniversary. My name is Jan Dobele, creator and maintainer of Oh My Posh. Now, based on what you know, you might be wondering one or two things. One, what is Oh My Posh? No clue. Two, what does Oh My Posh have to do with Azure Static Web Apps? Looking at it, it's actually a command line utility. First of all, allow me to give a quick introduction into Oh My Posh for those of you who don't know or might not yet be in the loop, and then take it from there and maybe surprise you a little bit into what you already knew that Oh My Posh could do in combination with Azure Static Web Apps. When starting a default terminal, in this case, for example, PowerShell, you can see that it has a default prompt indicator where I can type you know, some commands. You see that it actually contains information. In this case, it's the part that I'm in, and it also implies PS, which stands for PowerShell, obviously. While that all is very, very informational and interesting, it might not look as appealing, at least it didn't for me. So I set out a course to see if I could solve that or at least do something about it. So introducing all my posh, if we have a look at the terminal, or at least the shell that I use today, which is fish, you can see that it actually has a lot of colors in there, which displays some information, in this case, my username, the folder that I'm in, using the tilde, which is just uh, a synonym for the home folder that I'm in, and also an indication of whether or not the last command was successful, yes or no. Now, what you might not know is that while it started out in PowerShell, now it's available in Fish, you could also have the same prompt in Bash, if I look at it, set the stage even, everything looks identical, and PowerShell too. And on Windows, you can even use it on command if you wanted to. So one unified experience, regardless of the shell you are, teamable and extensible in any way you like. How to get started, you ask? Well, that actually provides the answer for the first question. What does Azure Static Web Apps have to do with all my posh? Now, obviously, if you want to get the information or at least the context on what do you need to do to install it, what can you configure, what are possibilities, etc., we need a website. Originally, the website was hosted using Netlify. We also had GitHub pages at one point in time. But then the arrival of Azure Static Web Apps actually allowed me to click one button from the Azure portal and set up a full CI/CD workflow for my website straight from that portal, leveraging GitHub Actions, which for me was exactly what I needed and exactly what I wanted, because then you can keep your source where it is all of the configuration as well. And just every time something merges to main, you get a deploy of your website. We also have the enterprise grid feature enabled for the website, which means that it's highly available across the globe. I think there are about 118 edge nodes available. So that means wherever you are, doesn't really matter. The website should always be blazing fast. I have some metrics behind that and I can assure you, A, it's really highly available, never goes down. So that's a very reliable service, which is what I need because otherwise people might not get the information that they want. And as a maintainer, obviously that always puts a lot of pressure on me in case they don't because for sure they know how to find me. Uh, so Azure Static Web has really helped me get to that reliable point. And also I don't have to think about deploying my website or at least managing my website anymore. Everything just works, which is pretty cool. Now that's a no brainer and that's very simple and straightforward, but we can take it one step further. And that's the interesting bit is how we really leverage the capabilities of Azure Static Web Apps and also enable certain functionality directly in your prompt. And that's probably something you don't know or might not have you know, thought about. So let me show you one part that someone contributed to All My Posh, which started an interesting discussion. And it was the Strava segment. Now, we're not all developers, right? And if you look at it from the philosophy of Azure Static Web Apps and maybe Azure in general, accessibility is key. You want to be able to have anyone just configure something without having to need to know the nitty gritty details behind it. Now we could have, and that was the first implementation, 
put all of the effort in the hands of the user by allowing him or her to create uh, an API client in Strava or whatnot. But that's rather cumbersome. And if you have no experience in that area or it's just something that you don't care about, why would we put that burden on you? So look, okay, can we abstract that away and maybe create an API wrapper around it so where we can offer the same functionality just with the click of one button? What we did to achieve this is actually leverage uh, Azure Static Web Apps functions integration. So you have the ability to just next to your website also implement a full blown API. And in this case, it's actually just like routing some data from one end to the other and making it available to the user in a format that he or she understands. So let me click that button and show you what exactly happens when I push it. So I press the Strava button you get redirected to Strava and there is one on my Porsche client where you can say, okay, I authorize this. It's read only because we only care about reading information. So there's no data that we can manipulate. So let me authorize it. This actually gets now routed via the function that lives in our uh, Azure Static Web App. And you get uh, an access token, refresh token and some other properties straight there uh, with an explanation on how to add it. So, let me go back to the Strava segment itself. You can see that it has a sample configuration here embedded. So this is one of the segments. I'll just copy this first, go back to my terminal. Let me go back to fish because I'm most comfortable there. Still in bash, there we go. Uh, I can actually leverage an environment variable to edit the configuration of all my posh that I have, which in this case is posh team. So let me quickly open that in Visual Studio Code. There we go. So this all opened very well. Let me see where I will put this in between. So if you look at my prompt now, we have a path indication, which is the orange bit. You have the green arrow in there, which is actually the Git segment that is collapsed. That's a new feature that we have when it's not enabled, but you can still see that it's actually there if the context would be uh, present. So let's maybe add it in between the part segment and the Git segment. Let's go. So we have part here and underneath is the Git segment. Let me quickly paste that snippet there. There we go. Also fix something here because I noticed that it wasn't right. Let's go back to the website. Look at the properties that we have here. Copy paste these. Whoop, there we go. Back to codes. Replace these dummy values with the ones that we need. Oh, that wasn't copied to right. That's on me. Let me do that again. Copy the right value this time. There we go. Back to code. And a trailing comma. All right. These are read only, so you can read them. Doesn't really matter much. You can't really abuse my tokens if you wanted to. So now we have the Strava segment added to the configuration. Let's go back to the terminal and see if that worked. So maybe just for the sake of Clarity, let me clear my cache so that I don't have anything lingering. Oh, and you can already see it immediately populated the Strava segment right away. So you can see that I actually went for a swim one day ago, which implies that uh, in this case, the color says it's still green. It doesn't, I don't need to get up because that was the intention of the Strava segment is based on, in this case, the logic is fully configurable. If we go back to code, you can see this based on how long ago your last activity was, your prompt can show you that it's maybe time to, you know, get up and do some activities, which is, is really cool uh, feature because we're all really tied to our desk sometimes even I am. So I really loved that functionality or at least this segment because it will push people to go out there, be healthy and stay healthy. And trust me, when you go for a run, it's the best thing to do when you're really trying to solve a hard problem because it allows your mind to to really free up uh, and give it some room. So I would definitely have a look at that and see if you would implement it. You can see that we have, uh, in this case, some color templates. So based on how long ago your last activity was, the color of the segment will change and actually, you know, in incentivize you to go out there and do some activities. How was this set up? 
So if we have a quick look at uh, how the how the website is built. In this case, it's convention based. There is a configuration as well. Let me quickly close uh, the other documentation. You can have an API part. So let me close the docs, which is here. So you can see we have two or three, uh, two functions in total. One is authentication to authenticate you. The other one is refresh because we actually want to also use the refresh token to make sure you stay. Uh, it stays accessible. What we did is, and that's something, you know, obviously that will happen if we always fetch that information live, it's not going to be the most ideal situation. So we cache it for a certain amount of time. And then once the cache value is gone, we refetch it. So only at a certain interval, your prompt will potentially be a bit slower because we have to do an HTTP request, but we don't always do it. To achieve this, we actually have a good combination of Azure Static Web Apps, leveraging the functions capabilities which are built in. They all get deployed automatically so we can easily tweak, uh, which is pretty amazing to see and do. I hope you enjoyed that little introduction into how Azure Static Web Apps can also power your command line. That was it for me. I wish you a wonderful day and enjoy the rest of the sessions.